Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen of the Ray Guitard channel. I am your host, Ray Guitard, and today, guys, we got a bit of a doozy. But first, if you're interested in a shout out at the beginning of one of my videos, be the first one to take a screenshot or a picture of you watching the videos and post it on your Instagram story and then tag me at Rayest of Guitards. I'll follow you back, I'll repost you, and I'll give you a shout out at the beginning of the next video. So, guys, we got a very long video today. I don't want to take up any more of your time than I have to. Recently, Sneeko has been, uh, you know, listening to people. He's been receptive to all of the criticism, all of the weight of the world coming down upon him, and him and Moise Critical decided to have a talk, a conversation. Now, I'm not a debater. I actually am not a fan of debates in general. I prefer just general conversations as opposed to these, like, gotcha and uh, leading questions and traps and shit. I think that's not very conducive to actual understanding of different sides of arguments. Now, at the beginning of Moist Critical's video about this, he said, oh, I don't like debates, and then proceeded to have a debate with him. So, yeah, I mean, sorry, Moist Critical, that was just a gay statement, because of course you like debates, otherwise you wouldn't be talking to Sneeko. Other than that, Seriously, grab a drink. I got myself a Caddyshack peace tea and an Italian sub. Extra mayo, of course. So guys, let's get into it. Discussion with you about cuties since I dropped that video back in 2020. <laughs> How time flies, man. Well, better late than never. So, have you seen the movie? Yeah, so... Uh, you mentioned you saw my video, so you know I didn't finish the movie. I physically couldn't. I found it just to be completely repulsive. Haven't you seen a lot of other movies that have repulsed you before? I watch horror movies. I watch movies that are provocative quite a bit. Yeah, but there's a. this is something I, I feel isn't being recognized. There's a difference between being repulsed by fiction, which is like horror movies. You know, that's not real and being repulsed because there's real children doing sexual things. You can't fake that. The actresses were 11 to 13 years old. They were twerking. There was some very gross scenes in there, and, like, the cameras would zoom in on their chest and their ass and their crotch. Like, that's a very different kind of repulsed. That's what we agree on. I don't agree that those scenes are good. I don't agree with the sexualization of children. I defend the movie because I defend the morality of the movie. And I think that most people that were disgusted have seen those clips or didn't watch the whole movie uh, like you. Now, this is kind of a crazy ass point that he's trying to make. Like the whole overarching morality of the movie doesn't excuse the fact that they actually put children in those scenarios. I don't know, it's kind of weird, but they could have alluded to those actions and not actually put children in those positions. Or they could have just casted adults as kids like they do in almost every other movie. Kind of like uh, Dance Moms, how that movie was putting real life kids in like a reality TV show setting and just abusing them and sexualizing them. Like it's just fucking weird and disgusting, dude. I remember my ex-girlfriend making me watch that with her and I was just fucking disgusted the whole time. I was like, dude, they're doing explicitly sexual dances. This is not fucking okay. Like they're literal children. They were tiny ass children. I remember specifically one of the episodes that they lost the competition because like the dance instructor, Abby, I think her name is, made them like twerk and do like explicitly sexual dances and the judges were like yo why are you making kids do this you lose what the fuck is wrong with you that whole like dance culture is filthy dude it's disgusting that movie was taken out of context quite a bit people don't really see the moral of the movie which is defending islamic values and also pointing out the very real problem that young girls have going on social media and doing these dances i agree that it's disgusting i agree that those scenes are repulsive but I think you could be repulsed by TikTok and pretty much what young girls are doing on social media every single day as well. I think that people outraged at that film should also be outraged at everything that girls are doing now on Instagram, TikTok, and all these apps. Well, see, but here's the thing. So let's, let's break it down to the very bare essentials. Can children consent? Can children consent? No, they can't. We agree. So then so then why do you think it's excusable to exploit them after having them sign up for this film? If they, if you admit they can't consent, how can they possibly give the okay 
to be shaking their ass and having a camera all up in their shit while they're doing sexual things like that scene where she takes a picture of her vagina, the scene where they're doing literal, like, toying around with cam sites, like, that's very different. Like, no one is disputing the message, right? It's well, a mess. I, I agree with the intention of the movie. I don't think that yeah. those scenes are good. That's what we completely agree on. But I think that that was an important movie to point out how many people get sucked into this world. No, it is not an important fucking movie to point that out. You can point that out without explicitly showing and putting children in those scenarios. Like, you don't have to exploit children in order to get across the point that exploiting children is bad. Sure, you could make the argument, well, if it's right there in your face, then it really goes to show just how bad it truly is. And the simple counter to that is, well, you literally exploited a child who cannot consent to doing those actions and later on in life might be affected by it, might look back on it, regret her decisions because she's a child. All of these kids' parents really should have thought it through and been like, no, I'm not going to put my child through that. Even if it's just for a movie, like, still, you're putting them in compromising positions, overtly sexualizing them, and then expecting a bunch of strangers from the cast and crew on set to not look at them sexually because they're being put in those positions and not treat them sexually because they're being put in those positions. There's so many things that go on behind the scenes on these sets and even potentially putting a child in that position, let alone just like a child actor in general, is already dangerous as fuck. But then putting them in a sexualized role and expecting there not to be any, like, sexual misconduct and potential exploitation further on set is, like, that's, uh, that's a, that's a crazy step. I think that was needed. That movie was needed, needed to be made. And I also don't think that that movie encouraged pedophiles to go and incite and look at these girls. I think that they're more likely to go on TikTok and find girls that they're attracted to. I don't think that this really attracted people to these girls. Well, it's not, like... It's not like I'm here arguing that this movie created pedophiles, right? But what it did is it delivered a film that they would watch for totally different reasons than the message. Again, the message isn't something that I or pretty much anyone has an issue with. The message is, like you mentioned, the social media poisoning them, making them do the sexual things, which is a problem. But this movie contributes to it since it still used real children to sexualize them to showcase it. That's the issue. You didn't need it, it to be children. I don't think it contributes to it because when you see girls doing this on TikTok, they don't know. I don't see girls doing it. it on TikTok, though, is the thing, right? The only people that would are going to be the pedophiles. They would go and search that out. This movie was advertised on Netflix. No, that's with not true. Every time I, I don't have TikTok on my phone, but once in a while before I was banned, I would go on there. And the first three videos would be the same thing that you see on Cuties. It's the, it's, and that's why I uninstalled the app. That's why I refuse to have it on my phone because it's directing you to those to those images. I don't know, Sneeko. TikTok's algorithm is pretty complex and it just kind of shows you what you look at for the longest. If you don't like that, then swipe. Keep swiping. Don't don't just keep watching. I don't know. If that's all you ever saw every single time you opened up the app, you're on a completely different app. I don't know, man. That's uh, that's a little crazy. I wouldn't be saying that so confidently. <laughs> um, I don't. That's not really the own that you think it is. Which is a problem. I'm not disagreeing. That's a problem. But that doesn't make no, we, this we, film. We ag we agree, but we just disagree that I think the movie was important to point out a flaw. Personally, I never empathize with girls being attracted, being directed to that site before I saw that movie. That really made me understand what it's like to be a girl and grow up in that age. Hold on, did you guys hear that person laughing? Why is he like on the streets of fucking Tokyo just screaming about child pornography and like, and cuties? Like what, <laughs> in front of people? What is wrong with you? <laughs> just like that other dude in my last like Andrew Tate video where he was just walking on the beach and was calling out like Hassan and Destiny and calling them cunts and everything. There were people walking past him on the beach and I'm like, why are you just shouting at your phone? on the beach like that you weirdo just enjoy the outside you don't have to be like screaming about some terminally online bullshit like while you're enjoying the sand excusing it because you believe it highlights a very real issue which it does 
but it contributes to that issue by using children. They didn't have to use kids. Can like you recognize that, right? They could have no, used. No, they didn't have. No, they didn't have to use kids. But I also look at the director and I look at the moral of the movie, and I don't think that it was anything unsafe. And I don't think that the director had any bad intentions making it. So maybe it shouldn't have been as sexualized. But I defend the morality of the movie, and I also defend the effect that it had on me. When I watched that, that made me have a new perspective. But do you see why that's kind of? Jesus, sorry, that was my cat. Do you see why that's kind of concerning to hear, though? Because in the time that I watched that film, there were unreal amounts of sexual scenes. In fact, the majority of the movie was them doing, like, the dance routines where they're smacking each other's ass, zoomed in on them shaking their ass in the camera. There's that scene where a security guard's like, what are you girls doing here? And they're like, we're dancers. He's like, prove it. So they start tw twerking for him, and he's like, oh, great, get in here. Like, that is a problem, no matter how you spin it. Again, the message is fine. There was never anything wrong with the message, and maybe the intention of the what, director what do you, was... How would you tell the director to convey the, the message in a different way? You would just not use children. You could deliver the same message, and you don't use children. The problem is... I don't they think it would be effective. I don't think it would be as effective. It's so unfortunate the that it's misinterpreted, but you couldn't be able to have that effect and show how provocative and how dangerous it is without using kids. You could very much get the same exact effect because number one, Jenna Ortega, she looks just like a kid. There's young looking adults, like that one Sky Jackson or whatever her name is. She looks like a child. She looks like a literal baby child. Um, out of the 8 billion people on Earth, I'm pretty sure you would find a couple that look like children that you could cast, and they could fully consent to it and everything. And for the average person who doesn't look up the actors and everything like that, it would still have the same effect. You could show that graphic content if you really had to show that graphic content. Of course, the shots probably did not need to be that bad, but when I watched that, I was absolutely disgusted. And like I said, it, it changed my perspective. And what I'm surprised about is that you are against wokeness because everything that your content is about, it doesn't seem like you've ever directed any energy towards how dangerous wokeness can be, which is exactly what that movie's about. It's saying how important Islamic values are in the face of wokeness. It's about a, a Western African family, Islamic. They go to France, a completely woke country that's now being burned alive and women are running around uh, topless. Wokeness has consumed France and it's pointing out a proper solution to this problem, which is embracing Islamic values. Who was the director of the film? Do you know? Her name is Maminu Dukure. Ma Maminu Dukure, I think that's her name. She's a, a Western African woman, and she moved to France. So I imagine that she had a very similar experience, and she was trying to portray what it was like growing up. So the message of the movie is about social media and almost exclusively she f directed the film based on seeing some children in a neighborhood doing sexual dances and wondering how did it get to that point this isn't okay so the movie was supposed to be about how does a child get to that point and it's about how social media is poisoning them and they're constantly comparing themselves they're seeing these things so they're putting on makeup and they're doing sexual shit and they never really understand why are the consequences of it it it's it's not a, a critique on wokeness though of course, anything in the art field you can derive your own meaning from. I recognize that almost everything you encounter in life, you tie back to either cancellation or wokeness. But in this film in particular, this is a movie I really feel conflicts hard with your ideology. Under no circumstances should children be sexualized is where I stand. Do you disagree? There's a lot of things in movies, like, I don't agree with- Whoa, whoa, that was a big old pause. Hold on, hold on. You cannot tell me right now that this man just paused on the question, do you think children should be sexualized in any way? You cannot tell me he just paused for a couple of seconds, dude. No, 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 no. Alright, nope, nope. Nope. Uh, fuck. I agree with incest in Star Wars, but Star Wars has incest scenes. I don't agree but that's with not incest. But that's not children, retard! Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. They were adults. And they also didn't know they were siblings whenever they kissed. And I'm pretty sure that the audience doesn't even know that they were siblings whenever they kiss. And then it's revealed later, and then they're like, Oh, what the fuck? I haven't watched Star Wars in like a year, and I just smoked J, so uh, my mind is a little foggy on my Star Wars lore currently. But yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm right. But it's portrayed. 
it's not real incest though this is real children being sexualized it's not fake these are we 11... agree i agree agree but i'm defending the point of the movie you can defend the and point I of the not, movie while not... but you can still condemn the movie itself the point can stand on its own two feet right like there is a problem which you recognize with kids being sexualized in specific on tiktok that is a problem in and of itself, but you can still condemn this film for contributing to the thing it's supposed to speak out against, which is sexualizing children, which you have admitted it does, and it didn't need to, like you said. That is yeah, the so problem. Maybe they shouldn't have used child actors, but I agree with the point of the movie. And, but what do you? How do you think that the point could have been conveyed in a better way? You think like they I, should have used eight? Should they have used eighteen-year-olds to play eleven-year-olds? That's exactly what most movies have done for a long time. A quick example is The Last of Us using Belly, Bella Ramsey to portray a, like a 14, 15 year old. Like you can do that and that's a lot more acceptable because there is no longer a victim. Like you'd said, children can't consent. These kids could never fully consent to being sexualized in this film like this on the big I would screen. Argue, I would argue that when they use 30 year olds and 27 year olds to play high schoolers like in Euphoria and like in 13 Reasons Why, it actually sexualizes kids more because we start to mature high schoolers and we think of them in a different way people in their 30s and their late 20s get addicted to euphoria and they have ideas and they start romanticizing teenagers in a different way because they don't use actors in that way and they make them look more mature that's a completely separate conversation you can make arguments for but that doesn't work here because it sexualizes already real children right so it i think that's you're getting hung up on like the what ifs and like what about isms on other sides, but the core doesn't change. And so they pretty much agree that the point of the movie in general is pretty good. But for some reason, Sneeko doesn't want to admit that, yeah, they just, they shouldn't use child actors. Maybe he does sooner, because he kind of did, but he's still like slightly fighting back on it. But, like, he did say, okay, maybe they shouldn't have used child actors. Well, what if the child was naked doing the vagina pick? If they showed the kid's vagina, is that now too far? It's still no, that's, realistic. That's too far. So there's two ways the movie could have been changed to be more effective and that people would understand the message. One, they could have used child actors and they should not have been sexualized in that way. Or two, they could have been 18 plus and it could have been sexualized, but then it wouldn't have been as effective. One of the two should have changed. I agree. Okay. So then... Do you think there's, like, levels to sexualization of kids that is acceptable and then unacceptable? No, this is never acceptable to sexualize children, but... Then, no. we, then we agree, so then can we then say, since this film sexualized children, I can't really champion the film. However, the message is okay. Like, I like the message. I agree completely. But I, the reason I defend that movie is because I think everybody just saw those scenes and looked past the message and looked past the good moral that the director had when making it. That could very well be the case for some people, right? 100%. I would say but, most people. Most people who hate the movie haven't seen it. Most of the people accusing me of being a pedophile for defending the movie haven't seen it. have no idea what it's about. They've just seen those scenes. But they're also still not wrong for being upset about those scenes. Like, can you recognize that? I think they that? should be more upset at the problem. I think people should direct that anger instead of calling me a pedophile on the internet. They should look at the system that turns these girls into sexual objects at a young age and be more angry at that. That is the real issue. That but is they, the bigger problem at, at large. They do though. That's not mutually exclusive like where it's one or the other. Do they? Th do you? Do I what? Talk about the problem? Do you, do you direct that anger? I see you follow the narrative that's popular on social media, but I don't see you ever directed at the problem. Do you agree that wokeness is one of the biggest problems that corrupts kids nowadays? Define wokeness. Wokeness is the liberal ideology, is feelings over facts. I identify this way because I feel like it is there's no gender, nothing matters, I do as I want. Everything that's promoted on social media. Okay, that's not like a definition. You got to come up with some sort of definition for it. Because the word does encompass like a large swath of things. But if you just throw it at everything that you don't like, then it just means nothing. For instance, the N-word. If you guys just throw that word at everything you don't like, it means nothing. Because then what do you mean whenever you say it? Like uh, this New England clam chowder I'm looking at right now on my desk. Yeah, I got a can of it because I'm gonna go make it in a few minutes after I finish this video. It's probably gonna be a lot longer than a few minutes, but if I just call it the N-word, 
What does that mean? It's a Progresso can, so it's blue. I don't know, guys. I don't know. Just described as how you've lived your life for the last year. Like, feelings over facts, for example. You champion bullying. You you think bullying needs to come back. I have never canceled you. Can you recognize that? I've... I have actually always spoke out against deplatforming, if you've ever noticed. I spoke out against no, it. No, but you were also disingenuous. When I called out the swordboard collage, you were like, these people just hurt my feelings. Most of those people actively advocated One for person. my cancellation. Nick is not green is the That's only person. True. That's not true. Ethan Klein celebrated and clapped when I was banned and said, good, finally this misogynist is banned. What happens on the internet, I understand. It's good to have back and forth. Bullying is good because it makes you have to develop your character in a different way. That's not why I was upset. I was upset because a lot of these people were secretly happy or secretly hoping that I was going to get banned because they disagree with my ideology. But then why am I on that list when I've only ever spoke out against deplatforming? That seems like I'm there because I hurt your feelings. You didn't hurt my feelings. I thought it was funny because you do look like the rest of them. I, I don't understand how, but we're not here to, to get into the nitty gritty, I guess. Damn, what's critical? Damn, you just got destroyed by Sneeko. Holy shit, guys, I think I'm on Sneeko's side now. Just gotta be honest. You got totally roasted, man. Sneeko, you're right about cuties. Everything you ever said, you're right. Similar. Overall, and you can see it with the Fresh and Fit video that you still haven't corrected, where you called Fresh a virgin. A lot of it, and you see people that hate me, they're like, oh, this alpha male, this alpha male, this alpha male Sneeko. And I've never once called myself that. I don't think I'm an alpha male. I advocate towards things that are conservative. I advocate towards Islamic values. That doesn't mean that I think I am an alpha male. I've never fact, called I you don't. an alpha male. I, I've, you, you're you're talking to someone. Consensual. You've called my friends that. You've called Fresh and Fit that. And you haven't they call them when they you are really hung up on fighting for the honor of fresh and fit. What I did was exactly what you preach. I made fun of him. Calling him a virgin is a joke. Do I think he's actually a virgin? Probably not. Yeah, I mean, hey, Sneeko, you're the bring back bullying guy, or at least one of them. And it seems like every single time you or one of your friends just gets lightly made fun of, you act as if they're canceling you? Like, pro-cancellation is like actively celebrating or, or advocating for someone to lose their entire platform. For instance, like all of those Groiper guys who were like mass flagging Mr. Girl and shit. Your big old buds over at uh, Fresh and Fit who literally flagged ABBA and Preach and tried to get their videos taken down. You gotta be against those forces if that's truly what you believe in. I don't think it's uh, really what he believes in, guys. Because you don't correct your mistakes. You I were wrong about Fresh and Fit, you were wrong about Andrew Tate, and so, you were wrong about the movie Cuties. Okay. Well, I'm glad you tied it back to Cuties, but before we get back to that, how am I... I feel like I'm one of the very few people on the internet who corrects himself. Whenever I make a mistake, I do go and make a clarification. For example, I got something wrong with a content creator holding a stand-up competition that was absolute dog shit, and then someone came there and made fun of him, and I didn't know the full context. Once I got the full context, I went back and made a follow-up video to explain it in more depth with more clarity. I always do that. With Fresh and Fit, you really hung up on this idea that he fucked three women that night after meeting an NBA player at a bar and they exchanged Instagram information and it turns out they were Eskimo bros with the same girl's pussy. Like, it's an outrageous story. Now, whether or not it's true, you haven't proved it either. Were you there watching him fuck? Were you cheering him on? He verified it. He showed the DMs with the basketball player. They that, did the whole podcast the, verifying the, the story. The DMs. You didn't correct it. <laughs> the, the, did you, okay, so you didn't correct, correct. that. They, they did verify the story. You didn't correct it. And did they have the basketball player? And, did they have the basketball player and the three girls he fucked come on and be like, oh my god, he absolutely plowed the shit out of me. It was the best sex of my life. Did, did they okay, have... that would be... I, that would never happen, but he did show the DMs with the basketball player verifying the story and that he did go to the party. Okay, just because he went to the party doesn't fully mean that they that he plowed like three chicks this is just like the most autistic like fucking internet shit imaginable <laughs> dude <laughs> what am i watching right now it's um it's 6 26 on a monday and i'm watching this what the fuck <laughs> out of all of the art all of the movies of cinema throughout all of history I decide to sit down for an hour and 14 minutes to watch <laughs> Sneeko defend his friend 
fresh fucking three like hot ass models i uh i don't know man i don't know i mean if the basketball player at least would say oh yeah he definitely like had sex with them and like vouched for the story then yeah that would be a little bit more believable a lot of the things you critique the woke for are ones that you actively partake in victimization that's a big thing with the woke right constantly playing the victim do you recognize how often you play the victim in terms of like, I'm being canceled, everyone's against me, you go on your Discord to talk more about it, even this morning talking and naming and shaming people that you think have slighted you as like a cancellation, you do the exact same things. Like you are also an SJW. That's not victimizing, that's actively pointing out that literally every single streamer, every streamer, the entire internet, all of YouTube reacted to your video. I drop a response where I even apologize for going out of character and getting emotional, but nobody wants to see what I have to say. I've become a caricature on YouTube rather than somebody who has something to say. It's, I've become a meme because I am banned. That's not victimizing, that's actively pointing out how strong censorship is and how people on mainstream platforms can run with the narrative when you're not there. The way you just justified it is a way many other people that you call playing the victim would also be able to justify things. The point is, when you are constantly whining and talking about how you're being attacked, it is still being victimized. It's disingenuous, and now we're having the debate, but you would rather DM and go and make this about drama. Oh, let me go and react and do more drama content rather than have a conversation. But I never I'm did glad that. I'm doing it now. But I, you, you have to remember that I didn't start any of this. You w reacted to me telling jokes about your friend and then had your audience tell me, and that went on for like two weeks. And so eventually... I explained why I don't like you. And then when I did that, that was the only time I planned on talking about you. You went on stream with your gun to threaten me, and you kept it up for three months, adding on, me to- I didn't do that to threaten you. That was a joke about clips. You you actually think I was threatening you. I, whether or you're not you were- You're gonna victimized. You're gonna think, okay, you're gonna say victimized, and you're gonna say I'm actively trying to threaten you by I, saying a clips joke on a stream. I don't think you were actually coming after my life. Uh-oh, guys. I don't know. Charlie was kind of threatened. Seems like he got a little scared in his uh, white t-shirt. He, he might have peed himself. I think he might have peed himself. He's scared. He's a scared little boy. Yo, that face of Sneeko right now is crazy. That is crazy. Ah, oh, you did him dirty on that screenshot. Oh, that's gonna be the thumbnail. Oh, no. Ah, oh, poor Sneaky. Sorry, Sneaky. Sorry, buddy. What do you think that I've said that I don't believe in? So for we'll use our beef, for example. You think I'm weak for not taking you up on a boxing fight. But on the same side of that coin, you won't take Brandon Buckingham up on that boxing fight. The whole point was, I don't stand by my beliefs because I won't fight you for it. Well, with that perspective, why wouldn't you fight Brandon Buckingham when you feel so strongly about your beliefs and he says the same things I do? Wouldn't you want to prove because that you stand by- the first fight that I want to take the first fight that I want to take would be against somebody, one, who has more clout than me, two, I so disagree selfish. with ideo ideologically. I don't disagree with him ideologically at all. But he says I the same really things know. I say this, about you. This, this person has been obsessed for a long time. He's suing me for emotional distress. Personally, I don't care about this person, and there's no benefit for me to take my first fight with this person. So then if your I beliefs... somebody, I challenge... So there, then you're... The reason I challenge... I, I was banned on Twitter for challenging Hasanabi to a fight, one, because a lot of people want to see that. He's well known. He disagrees with me completely. There's a lot of tension for that fight. All right, Sneeko, calm down there. You should be advocating for a Sam Hyde versus fucking Hassan Piker fight. Have you got anyone you want to call out in the heavyweight division? Oh, you know it, lad. You know that Hassan Piker? I'm coming to kill you in Los Angeles at your house. Or in the ring. No, in real life. No one cares about Sneeko fighting Hassan. No one gives a shit about that. They care fully, 100% about Sam Hyde and him. Number one, they're the same weight class, so it would make sense. And he constantly calls him a Nazi. And in the past, he said, punch a Nazi in the face. Sometimes you need to allow the spotlight to go off of you. And then maybe you can siphon off some of the light. <laughs> Be a little leech, okay? Be a leech. That's what you need to do, Sneeko. You are at leech level now because you are on Rumble. You are a little parasite, okay? Don't don't get ahead of yourself here. There's beef in the air, and you talk a lot about 
me so things that you probably wouldn't say to my face, it would be an entertaining fight. But that's, again, that's not the point. The whole point is you think I am weak and you keep harping on this for not taking you up on the fight. But you won't take someone up on a fight that's saying the exact same things I am. So it seems like the beliefs, you don't stand by that strongly if you're not confident I you can you make a spectacle. I knew that you would never accept the fight. Charlie, Charlie, we both know you wouldn't accept the fight. Right, I've made the that very was, clear. We both know. Even when I challenge you, we both know. It's to point out that a lot of people talk a lot of talk online and they never have to face the consequences because they stay in their room gaming all day. That was to point it out. Men are tired of seeing this back and forth internet drama. They want to see people go and settle it. I've never said a word about this person that you're bringing up. I haven't said a word about him since last summer. I won't say his name publicly again. I'm being sued for emotional distress. I'm leaving that alone. I have no problem with this person. You, we have gone back and forth. We're going back and forth on Twitter. People want to see it. People are tired of these keyboard warriors going back and forth. That was to point out the fact that men should not feel so comfortable talking a lot of talk on Twitter that they would never say in person. Bruh, bruh. The way he just, like, weasels out of it and, like, kind of just, like, slips. He's a slippy little rodent. He, he contorts his skeleton inside his body so that he can fit into any crack imaginable. So he can slip around your point and just get to his own thing. He's, uh, you know, he's developing the skill well. What a disgusting way of communicating. <laughs> Claims of Brandon Buckingham being like a rapist and shit. Wouldn't that be something that you'd want to fight about at that point? Like, that I, was I, not a claim that I made. That was not a claim that I'm- I can't remember the specific- Alright, now we're gonna get down to the semantics, ladies and gentlemen. He never said he is a rapist. He said he was going to rape. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, he's so pissed now. He's so upset. Specifics of it, but you did toss out the word rapist when talking about Brandon Buckingham. I don't remember the context it was used in, but you did mention it, right? So why is all of a sudden that now beneath you? Like, you, you don't have any problems with him now after he's willing to fight. The point is, you're talking about, you say these things and you don't have consequences. Well, what about you? You said these things. He's trying to give you those consequences that you think are so important and you won't take him up on it. There is a clear hypocrisy. Right, that was, that was the, something, that was a different example. The guy was a uh, previous fan. It's a giant misunderstanding. There's a lawsuit involved, so I can't talk about this too much, but that is not what I accuse him of. I do not think he is that word. I never said that about him, and that's- Oh, no. Oh, God. He's wiggling. He's wiggling. Oh, God. Dude, he's like a little fish. He's flopping right now. He's floundering. Oh, dude. This is- this is incredible. This is incredible. He really doesn't want to apologize for it, and I don't understand why. Like, you were not in the right in any way, shape, or form, but he has such a big ego that he can't even admit whenever he was clearly, blatantly in the wrong. $50 on a course from vetted millionaires or watching a game streamer for six hours every night? Well... <laughs> He didn't use the course to get rich. He's getting rich from the course the same way that the course that you're selling is not like your main way that you made money. You are making money from that course now as opposed to what the course is teaching. But again, this is getting completely sidetracked. That, that's just not true. That's not my main source of income. I enjoy doing it and it's a great way to have a network. And you talk about all the lonely men that are out there. What are you doing to go and help these people? We understand that there's a problem with loneliness of men. People get in there, they ask me questions about how do I network better? How do I find people who are like-minded? You give them advice and you can see them transform their life. I'm curious as to what you think is a better alternative because game, you stream gaming for six hours. Is that a better solution to men who are lonely watching you play video games or giving advice to men who don't know how to find a community of like-minded people who don't know how to make money online and want to live a lifestyle where, look, I'm in Japan. You're still in the same room that I've seen you in since high school. This is a crazy fucking point that he keeps trying to make. Like, he acts like he's better than Moist Critical just because Moist Critical isn't like a full-on, like, politics-brained retard. His platform is just, hey, I want to do entertainment drama shit. Not everyone has to stand for something. And I mean, clearly he stands for some stuff, like standing against deplatforming. Can go places. I choose not to. I'm happy here the same way you're happy traveling in Japan. 
Like, these are non-arguments that you're making. It's the same argument I've of- I've never seen why- you outside of your room. And in, 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 I don't know how many years I've seen you on YouTube. I've never seen you out of your room. I've seen you with dildos in your room, throwing it at each other and your friends. I've never seen you travel. I've never seen you network with other people. I've never seen you show your audience what's possible if they make money as well. I've seen you play video games since like 2016. That's just not even true. Hold on. They do fucking outdoor shit all the time. Sneeko, you know what you're doing right now? You're doing the exact same thing that you were complaining about everyone else doing whenever they don't watch your reply to the whole drama, your video to the whole drama. Also, it's his platform. He doesn't have to showcase him going out and doing every single thing that he wants to do. Like, if what got him his 12 million subscribers was just, like, gameplay and, like, commentary shit, then why wouldn't he continuously do that? Why wouldn't he just stick with what he's already doing and then experimenting and throwing in, like, a couple of creative fun videos every once in a while? You're talking about things that are agreeable, and this is what I've said about Andrew Tate. He doesn't always say silly, dumb shit, but he does, and he couples it with good, real things. Like you mentioned, porn addiction is a problem. Like, no one's gonna disagree with that. But everything that you're sprinkling in outside of it is totally fucking irrelevant to the rest of it, man. You going and flexing on your audience isn't showing them what's possible, it's showing what's possible when they're paying for your lifestyle. The advice you give, you thrive off them staying miserable. Right? The second they get happy, the second they get money, no, the second I, I they definitely don't. they will not I be paying don't. for your course if anymore. My audience, if my audience does not get value from my content, they're going to leave. The reality is that streamers and content creators like you, the audience always grows up. They watch a little bit of the gaming content, then they grow up. They're not learning anything. And so they go to another content creator. They go to somebody else who is popular or trendy. You need to add value to the audience or else they are going to grow out of it. And the I value know the from... Of that. The value of most things is entertainment. What you used to do was humor interlaced with your stuff. Now it's just preaching to the choir of people that already subscribe to your hive mind. It's you're still doing no, the same thing. That's what you see on Twitter because that's the only mainstream platform that I'm still allowed to be on. If you watch my stream, I have I watched your stream. When I watch my stream for four hours, it's not preaching. A lot of it's humor. My motto is seek truth through funny. Which I you've look abandoned. At what's going on in the world? That is very true. Have you ever seen any of Sneeko's fucking, like, newer live streams? They're dog shit, dude. They are just him just constantly fucking preaching, basically just making the red pill version of, like, a woke TV show, where, like, every other line, every other word he says is some, like, stupid politics brain bullshit. It's very, very exhausting. I like to think about other things than my life, and I want, like, this fantasy made-up world like has crazy monsters and crazy shit going on and just action-packed stuff that literally can't happen. I don't want to have to think about just like real world problems and like fucking economics, gay shit, I don't know. Whenever a show does anything climate change, it makes me want to shoot myself. I want to die. It seems you have completely abandoned that. I have watched your streams. I have. A lot of it devolves into just talking again about the same things you always mention. Soy boys, bots, woke mind virus, and then dancing around. And then always trying to defend and find the other side of something controversial. It's the same formula over and over again because that's how you found to keep your audience hooked. It's no different than that's people that- I go on Omegle and I'm joking around for an hour or two hours. I bring on my viewers and we joke to each other. I bring on people real life people they sit next to me and we joke around i have different podcasts i have different guests the I jokes just did a podcast you... with ryan dawson uncovering epstein and uncovering the truth about 9 11 which i really recommend that you go see to an alternative platform that's labeled as an alt-right conspiracy website and still maintain the same audience you can't do that by repeating the same things every day you have to add some value but you can that's the number one grift right now as long as you are contributing to an echo chamber the people will not leave you you form a reliance where they're constantly suckling your tit for ver like validation that their point of view is the right one and the more that you claim the victim the more that solidifies and cements them that that belief is the correct one because that's people are attacking not them. true at all i've been talking about the woke mind virus for a long time and now my audience wants to get to know the truth so i've been interviewing different people i did a whole podcast uncovering epstein and who's actually on the client list because that's one big conspiracy theory that people want to know more about but here's the thing Sneko, you're only interviewing people that already agree with you 
You're not trying to seek out new opinions. Sure, you go on Destiny every once in a while. I mean, you haven't been on there for a while. At least there, you would have some pushback to your ideas. But all you're doing is constantly going on fresh and fit and having like this random chick you found off the street on there who just constantly says the exact same thing as you over and over again, but just in a little nicer way and in a lighter voice so it sounds less threatening. Because, well, I'm a woman, and, and I'm emotional just like you, but I hate the Jews. Don't play dumb with me, Sneeko. What are your beliefs? What are, what are they? I don't know them. Can, can you tell so me what I you feel, believe in? Yeah, I feel like I've made my beliefs very clear. I am very firmly on the side of there are certain things, and it's going to be different for everyone, that make people happy. And I main thing I want is for people to be happy. I don't like that men are alone, which is why a lot of the advice I give is telling them to get out of their comfort zone and start with something like the gym. The gym is a very social environment. It's an environment where everyone's working towards similar goals. You immediately surround yourself with like-minded people, and maybe you make a connection at the gym. Maybe you can find a friend there. But even if you don't, you are out of your comfort zone in an environment where people are working for a similar goal. And that already changes your mindset as a person. You've given yourself a goal you are acting on it and now you're surrounded by people that are also in a similar boat i think most importantly is i want people to be happy and a lot of times they can't find that so i don't think there's anything wrong with escapism like watching someone play a game or even playing games yourself watching a sport playing a sport yourself is also great i play pickup basketball every thursday getting out talking outside of a comfort zone instead of say, sitting online making 20,000 tweets on the Sneeko Twitter I think is not productive replying to Sneeko's Twitter replying to my Twitter none of it I think is productive I've had Twitter since 2012 I've made 2600 tweets and half of those are just shit posts or a retweet I think all of that locking yourself inside as a recluse living in this completely toxic landscape like Twitter is the most detrimental thing for a person and that extends to TikTok as well. I think TikTok has absolutely ruined people's brains in terms of what they can even stomach as an attention span. Having to have like subway surfer underneath a video of someone talking because you can't focus long enough, I think it's all a problem. So the things I talk about are usually geared towards either entertaining people for eight minutes a day or whatever, or during a stream, if they're already home from work and just need to unwind, I think all of that is fine. But I do always try and give some level of advice. My background, I'm, I don't know if you know, I'm a human science graduate with a concentration in exercise physiology. I believe very firmly in the mind-body connection in terms of strength building and muscle building. It, it's going to change your whole brain chemistry and it will help improve the way you're looking at the world. So that's one of the big things I talk about is even if you're... 100% comfortable with your body, there is no reason not to at least try to make these kind of differences and change your perspective on things. It, it, like, it doesn't even have to be a body issue. It helps your mind overall. I am always against people paying for advice from so-called gurus and professionals because you don't need it. The beauty of the internet is it is an unlimited repository of all of the human knowledge, just this compendium of every piece of information for every subject you could want. And you can access it for free. Under no circumstances do I ever advocate for someone paying up to $50 a month for advice they can freely find right now. Even if it doesn't come yeah, with a built-in- Yeah, gamers always have their argument, but then they never talk about how college is a waste of time and that people go into I, fifty see, to $100,000 in debt from people who aren't vetted millionaires. Whoa, 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 whoa. I myself did not go to college, all right? I went into a trade, but a very, very successful route that you can take is going to college for a specific thing that you know there will be jobs for. What he's getting hung up on is he's thinking of arts degrees and like musical theater degrees. Those degrees are, are very, very useless. But there are still a lot of things that are, are very necessary <laughs> to go to college for, so. If you could pay $50 and talk to a vetted millionaire who has made money online in a way that they don't teach in school, $50 is a steal. People but you get really upset about this because you're paying somebody directly and you know who you're spending the money on. You don't get upset about college because you don't know the principal, you don't know the headmaster, you don't know the donors. They're nameless people behind a university. So the point of the network is, is collection of information concentrated in one place and also the network of people that you can find. Right here, I'm in Japan traveling with somebody that I met from the creativity kit.
That nope. is something that is invaluable and that you will only find by paying $50, which is not a huge price. That is a big price, but also, do you see what just happened there? You $50 went in is a huge price? That's the same price as your merch that you're using to advertise on this drama. Would you rather your audience pay $50 for a t-shirt from a gamer or they meet somebody that they can go start a business with? Yeah, hold on, Sneeko. What the fuck kind of argument is that? <laughs> Damn, this dude is like so fucking out of touch. He just hangs out with all of these fucking rich retards with yachts and shit and thinks that that's just what everyone's life is like. $50 is a ridiculous amount of money for a lot of people. $50 can be someone's grocery budget. You're not getting a lot anymore with that, but it's like, damn, Sneeko, that is, uh, that is a crazy fucking thing to say, dude. What the hell? What just happened there is I was talking about something and you went into PR speak and salesman mode to talk about your course, and you attributed something to me that I actually talk against. I actually have spoken many times about why college just isn't right for everybody. It's not. It simply isn't. I think college provides an invaluable social experience where if for the first time in your life you're on your own, so you learn how to fend for yourself, you learn how to interact with roommates, strangers, so you get social skills, but college is not going to be a great fit for everyone, especially when it comes to certain academia sp uh, positions, especially like in some art fields. I actually talk a lot about that, but you keep lumping me in with this perception of a gamer and these beliefs that you don't know anything about me on, and yet you still put me in there. You, and then, then you should probably make them more clear. I, I do. I've, I've been personally watching your videos for years, and I had no idea about any of this. So, I've seen you gaming. I've seen you react to drama content. I didn't know that that was your method to make people happy, which I think is a very is a narrow way of answering that question about what you believe in and what your belief system is. I was still but that's going. That's fine. But I'm glad that you said that, and I think that you should reiterate that more in your video to add more value, add more value to your audience. I've, so you said you've watched for a long time. These aren't secrets. I made a video six years ago. I just double checked. I uploaded a video six years ago called You're Getting Fucked by College Textbooks. The entire video is about how college textbooks in particular are a massive scam and a very predatory system that universities are using. I do talk about these things. You are just not seeing them and then still putting words in my mouth. Uh, my beliefs, I think, are very clear to the people that watch. They're not a secret. They're not hidden. I make them very obvious. And you know, I always kind of find it like a cringe whenever uh, YouTubers and shit tell you like what's the best path to go down. I don't know, it just always feels kind of gay. I couldn't listen to you because you kept saying slurs. How is that necessarily helping make people happy or positive in any way, shape, or form? What does that do to contribute to your overall goal? Because it's not humor either, so it's not seeking truth through funny. It's literally just spamming slurs because you were mad at me. It is. The reason that it's funny is because I'm on a platform that has free speech and you're not bound by wokeness where you can't say certain words and you're labeled racist or homophobic or transphobic, where you can say things even if you don't mean them because we're not trapped with words. We're but why say something you don't... Why, why say something you don't mean, though? What, what does that do? Wouldn't that go against your ideology where you're, like, faking it? That's not a word. A word doesn't encourage. A word doesn't encompass a whole belief system. A word can be funny. The word faggot is funny. That was the funniest thing you said this whole debate. <laughs> I love that Charlie left that in. That's, you know, that's cool. That's, uh, this is free speech, baby. It's so beautiful whenever it's just kind of chill in there. And just like everyone's just kind of talking. I always like seeing it. Even if it's even if it's like ugly and it says and people say crazy shit. It's still the the just the pure freedom of it is just I don't know. It's beautiful. How, how is this? That? <laughs> I, I, See? I don't... You're laughing now. See? Well, That's because it's just an out, it's an outrageous claim. See? It's exactly. like talking to a it's child. Outrageous. Well, You're no, like my the... point. It's no, outrageous. it's funny. Your defense this of it. The first time we laughed this whole time. First well, time we laughed this whole this whole thing. This because is the one little word. <laughs> yes, because it's such a silly defense of it. It's like it's like a child who hears fuck for the first time and he's like, Woohoo, daddy said fuck. Like uh, but it is funny though. Except I will say that whenever Sneeko's saying it, it's probably coming more from a place of hate rather than a place of just kind of being like ironic and just like, ah, it's uh, it's a fucking it's a crazy word. I'm just saying it. I don't know, it's definitely loaded in a different way, I would say. <laughs> just from all of the stuff that he said in the past, I don't know. Which it seems like you can recognize. Do you believe that? Do you believe that Andrew and Tristan Tate are innocent? That I don't know. 
They could be, and I've said that from the start. You don't, I, you don't have a, a belief on that? Well, because I don't have the evidence. They've been charged twice with the human trafficking, but none of the you evidence didn't look is at public. All the, you didn't look at all the victims and their allegations and how everything I, was exposed on WhatsApp, how they plan to make a Netflix movie out of this. All I, of I've that seen. was online. I think, but then, you see, uh, if you cover current events, this is something you jump onto the pizza box, but you don't take the time to go and look at all the evidence that was debunked. That's not true, though. because like, I why, have, why, I, why do you spend the narrative laughing at somebody falsely in prison, but you can't go and just look at a couple screenshots and see that as garbage? You're laughing at the pizza box putting two people in jail because of what you saw on Twitter. When I say the word faggot or I say a slur, it's just a funny word to say. There's no consequences for that. Nobody goes to jail falsely. Okay, hold on. Why isn't he saying, like, camel jockey and, like, all that shit, huh? Why are you, why are you protecting the Muslims, huh? Now, Muslianos, I love you guys. I genuinely do. I mean, uh, a pretty large portion of my family is Muslim, and I love them to death. I gotta be honest. Right up until the explosion, I love them. I, I truly do. And then once the dust settles and everything's cooled down, and I regain my hearing, then I'm kind of like, ah, well, that, uh, you know, I mean, what do you expect? The evidence from both sides, I always do. I don't just go to these tribes and just assume everything on my side is right and everything on that side is wrong. I take information from all angles in order to find where I personally sit on this perspective, on this situation. So, for the Tate brothers, being charged twice with human trafficking, while there is some shady shit from the victims, there is still real merit to some of the things that people were talking about, such as something you talked about as well. The taking of the passports from some of the women and getting there under the guise that they would be able to date them. Those are very odd, very peculiar things. So it's not like it's just, oh, all of that's wrong and we have to disregard all of it because this is here. There is, on both sides here, evidence that makes it a very complicated case, which is why it's gone on for so long, right? It's not one where I know the answer. They could be innocent. They could be guilty. I do think it's weird they've now been charged twice. There is some very odd things there because that's not exactly a light thing to come after someone for. And there is things that you do have you talked that about. wrong that people can go to jail for four months without any evidence yes. of charges? And I, I, even outside of the Tates, I have said that in this country where you can go to jail on suspicion of things without ever being charged. It's a problem. Yes, it is a problem. Okay. I didn't see that video. I saw the video laughing about the pizza box putting her in jail. Did, right. did you make a video about that? Yes, and I talked... Well, it's in, the, it's in that video where I say I don't know if he's guilty. I don't like if there's real victims here. Like, I would never celebrate someone being a human trafficker because there's victims. I didn't... I wouldn't celebrate him being a human trafficker. That means there are real victims there. Even though I disagree with, like, his Hustlers University and a lot of the dumb shit he says, I wouldn't want him to be a human trafficker. That means there are real victims being in terrible situations that's the ugly truth with like hassan and ethan klein who get so happy and giddy at the fact that these guys are potential like human traffickers and actually did that to women if all of the allegations end up being true like that would be an insane thing to celebrate and you know that those two pieces of putrid fucking scum like literal gum on the soles of my shoe disgusting filth would absolutely celebrate. They will scream. I'm calling it right now. If that ends up happening and come and they come out as true, I bet you they are going to like party that those that they are actually fucking human traffickers and they're going to jail. They're gonna party for it. Future guitar, you uh prove me wrong, hopefully. Please prove me wrong. I did say that, and I don't know if he's guilty. I don't know if he's innocent. Nobody does right now, except for them and whatever's going on in Romania. The joking about a pizza box is things I make about anything that has craziness around it. Like the Gwyneth Paltrow trial. There's so much silliness there that I talk about, but at the end of the day, I don't know who's innocent or guilty. I'm joking about the goofiness of things that have come up. Right? What the fuck was that sound? <laughs> it's just literally, <laughs> what the fuck? What was that? Look, look at the way that people who are telling the truth get painted as, they get painted as, these insult like incel virgin loser racist misogynist they've, they've tried to box you in instead of instead of tell the truth about you because I, I think that they don't like what you're talking about but i would like for us to have another conversation in the future i like that you have a, a good message about how people should be happy i like that you're advocating for the gym and you're playing basketball and you're telling people to get out of their comfort zone i think that those are all really good things and i do think that you're funny i i, I can't deny about that like it's a little monotone 
But, uh, you know, you're a funny guy. Hey, that's just Charlie's autism, all right? Everyone's a little slow from time to time, okay? All right. Sometimes I have to labor my voice if I want to sound a little bit more interesting in my videos, okay? It's all about the pizzazz, all right? It's all about the uh, entertainment factor, the wow factor, baby. One of the things that's I was fair. really... That's fair, and that's why you, you made me realize that I need to... This whole hate brigade on Sneeko in the recent weeks... I'm going to repurpose my message now. I'm not going to... What up, man? Yo, do you know uh, Moist Critical? Hey, say what's up to him right now. We're, we're, we're saying hi. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, hey. hey look. I follow you on Twitter. That's all I'm just saying. Yeah. Hey. I'm uh, just traveling the world right now. Cool, man. Um, see Moist uh, Canyon video? Yeah, we saw me. What did you think of the Me Canyon video? <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty funny. Yeah. Hey, Charlie. What's up, man? It was hey, funny. How's it going, man? About it. Cool. Hey, yeah. Charlie. We squashed the beast. Oh, that's awesome, dude. Yeah. I've, been, yeah, awesome. I've been actually working uh, to talk to you more. Uh, it's funny. I think that's a good way to end it on. Um, hope we could talk again in the future. I don't think we should have beef. And yeah, you did. I, I, I want to thank you for uh, for starting that whole Nico hate brigade because it's like, yeah, you know what? Maybe I am um, guilty of doing the same things that I am mad about. And I, I do attribute a lot of that to. To being canceled and a lot of resentment about that but i just have to spread positivity now and then not engage in the same type of behavior that i criticize yeah uh, you're right about that so i'm just gonna go and you know i'm not gonna go attack mode anymore i, I don't think that there's there's any value to that it's just gonna come back to me well i actually really appreciate the conversation man it's nice to it's nice to hear like a more human side of you outside of like you know what i see on twitter or rumble I actually do think this was a very valuable conversation, so I appreciate you taking. Oh! I really appreciate you taking the time to have a bit of a call with me about it. Charlie's fucking cat is trying to nuke this entire conversation, He's trying to make it go out with a bang. Jesus, Jesus! I knew I couldn't trust cats, man. Well, you know, honestly, guys, at the end of the day. That's good to see. That's really nice to see. He, uh, he's growing. And this is the power of bullying, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm sure one day someone will want to bully me. And I hope that day comes because I'll bully him right back. And Allah will be the final judgment, ladies and gentlemen. Mashallah. All right, other than all of that, guys, like, comment, and subscribe for more videos in the future. Other than all of that, gay retard out.